Hey guys, today we're going to teach you how to use a ferrocerium rod. Okay, so maybe lighting a fire with the ferrocerium rod isn't going to be as easy as that. But if you understand the technique and understand how to pair it up with different elements that either you carry or nature can supply, it's a quite simple process. Now the premise behind use of a ferro rod is very simple. We go ahead and strike a sharp surface along the edge of the rod itself. That is going to remove material from that rod. That material as it mixes with oxygen is pyrophoric. It's going to give us a hot intense spark. So that hot spark is going to ignite whatever we throw it onto, create flame, and then we build our fire around it. Now the first step in understanding the technique of using a ferrocerium rod is the actual scraping motion. The scraping motion is the most important part of everything because that's what's going to drive material off the rod itself. So we want to always make sure that we have a good striking surface. In this case, we're going to use the supplied striker that comes along with it. It has a nice 90 degree spine. The back side of a knife will work really well, a piece of glass. One thing we never want to use though is the blade of our knife. We always want to save that because that's a resource that's very difficult to replicate out here if it does get destroyed. So once we have a good striker then identified, we want to think about the actual motion of sliding the striker across the rod. This is imperative because we want to remove as much material from this device as possible and get the hottest, most intense spark into our tinder bundle to create fire as we can. So I like to think of this striker as a plow. It's plowing the material off of this rod. So we're going to keep this striker at a 45 degree angle towards whatever our tinder bundle is. So as I strike this, the material is getting clumped up in front of this and getting trapped between the rod and the striker itself as it pushes towards my index finger here. If I would turn the striker the other way, such as this 45 degrees away from the direction I'm striking, a lot of the material that we're removing can go back over the striking surface and be lost in the mix. So we always wanna make sure that we're pushing it forward to get the most benefit out of each single strike. And then once we understand our striking direction and how to hold our striker, we can pick one of two methods that seem to be most successful for most individuals. First is something we call the pump method. For the pump method, we want to securely place our rod down onto the ground, and then we're gonna take our striker, again, holding that good 45 degree angle, and with a lot of pressure, we're gonna pump downward. But what we want this to look like is we want it to look like a shower of sparks down at the base of our rod. That's going to work really well to superheat that material that we're trying to ignite and ultimately catch it on fire. And then for the second method, it's something that I call the push-pull method. For this method, we still hold our striker at that 45 degree angle towards whatever tinder source we're trying to ignite. But this time, as we strike, we pull our rod away. So we're pushing our striker, pulling our rod. This is not going to give us continuous heat, but it's going to give us heavier globs of metal in order to catch that tinder on fire. So again, 45 degrees and I'm just pulling and pushing at the same time. And now that we have the technique down, we understand how to throw hot sparks with this ferrocerium rod, we need to gut those sparks to do something for us. We need them to catch something on fire. And there's several different ways that you can actually do this. So let's first look at things that you can carry with yourself or things that you might have along that you can manipulate in order to make them catch fire with this. Cotton and Vaseline is a great option. Strikeable sweet fire. Yuko sweet fire biofuel tabs work great. Stormproof sweet fire. and even matches. 
And as you can see, any one of those sources you carry along is a viable option. Now you might be thinking, why would I ever light a match when I can just strike the match? Well, sometimes in very wet or damp conditions, even at night, you might lose that striking surface that you need to ignite any one of those fire starting devices. And without that, it renders them useless. But if you have that ferrocerium rod as an emergency fire starting device, now you can also utilize those other things that you had along to start fires. So when it comes to natural materials, the ferrocerium rod can light a variety of different things. It can light dried grasses and flower top, birch bark, or inner bark from trees. thin shavings that we make from dried sticks, or even resinous woods like fatwood. So as you can see, carrying things along, also gathering different items from nature, give you a wide variety of uses with the ferrocerium rod to make fire making that much more effective. So think about carrying one of these devices with you when you go out into any type of setting, not only for emergencies, but also for just a fun time around camp. Have some challenges, have some excitement with your friends and family on who is the best at using the ferrocerium rod. So this was Dan Wolwak, Yuko Ambassador. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, check out all the other videos. We talk about fire making, fire creation, and until the next video, stay lit.